Whoa, ho, ho, folks. I'm Santanon, and this is the only interviews that matter. You know, I've noticed something. I tend to cover past events on this show. Granted, the information and the truth I reveal about those past events is all recent knowledge. Recent knowledge that has been revealed to me through a combination of research and top secret sources. But today I want to try something different, and I want to cover something a little more recent. We're going to have to travel across the pond to visit our limey friends in Jolio, England. I've recently come across an extremely reputable news source from over there called The Daily Star. And a certain article of theirs sparked my interest, and I decided to do some research. So... On July 16th of 2020, a 26-year-old named Paul Froggett Frogert Frog at Froggett Frogger Fuck it. My show. Even if this isn't how your name is pronounced, your last name is now Frogger. So, Paul Frogger worked at a dog food factory. He had just got done working a grueling 12-hour shift, hopped on his bike to cycle home through Oakwood and Black Glow Spinny, whatever that means. You know what, I'm, I'm not really familiar with all the British terms. I'm a true American patriot, so I don't bother learning bullshit like that. But, uh, fuck it. Um, why don't we have Paul Frogger on and let him tell you guys his story. So go ahead, uh, Paul, Mr. Frogger. Thank you for joining us. Why don't you tell the viewers what you witnessed? Thank you for having me, sir. You're welcome. On a Thursday morning at 5 a.m., I was cycling home from work and I saw something odd in the sky. It was a glowing orange spear just hovering there. At first, I thought it must be Venus. Right. Or a satellite. But it seemed to be much closer than either of those things. Oh. I stopped on my way to take some photos. Smart. The object looked a far bit bigger in person than visible in the photos. Then, the object started to move around and rotate in shape. I could see it was a circular with a part sticking out from, like, the main body. When this started, I got chills down me back oh. and felt like there was something wrong here. Scary. I hurried on my way home. I just, like, ran the fuck off. You know, I legged it. It's, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like I could, like, chase down a lorry and pop in at the pub for some bangers and mash or some fish and chips. What? You know what I'm saying? No. And as I, well, I didn't actually leg it because I was on me bike. Okay. But uh, as I kept cycling, I could swear the object was moving along my course. Creepy. But I just told myself, it must be some kind of optical illusion. Paper lantern. I entered a wooded area and lost sight of the object through them trees. Shocking. Usually at this time of the morning, there's a chorus of bird song right. and insects, okay. but the woods were dead silent. Creepy, get out of there. As I cycled down the path, I came around a bend, and I saw something I will never forget. What'd you see? Standing a few meters ahead is what I can only describe as a humanoid praying mantis. What? This thing was at least seven foot tall, light green, with a triangular head, big oval black eyes. It had all the features of a mantis, but stood on two legs, and had somehow human-like shape about it. Scary. I was completely frozen with fear for what felt like an age. Creepy. But it was probably only seconds, 
I stared into this creature's eyes. Whoa. And it stared back. And I was like, crikey. I felt like it could read me mind. And I could read it. Wow. My fear was replaced with completely alien thoughts of utter hatred and evil that I felt projected from this thing. Okay. This kind of hypnotic kind of state. It made me step back as if I was going to pounce on me. Sounds crazy. Yeah. But I felt like I could sense its feelings towards me and it was just like pure alien hatred. You know when you're watching a David Attenborough documentary? I don't know. You see a spider eating a fly and it's just a malevolent sense of evil. Wait. Who the hell is David Attenborough? Google? Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, that's who David Attenborough is. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Frogger. Uh, sorry for the interruption. I, I'm just not really familiar with uh, your British crap. It's alright. I know you American blokes don't really know much about all celebrities. Well, uh, that's because... Your celebrities are British, and it's a scientific fact that Brits can't be celebrities or else the royal family will have their celebrities killed, cloned, and then the clone is put under the British royal family's control using reptilian technology. You right there in that respect, Mr. Santanon. But yeah, I had to quit me job because everybody kept calling me the Mantis Man of Warwick. That's sad. It had a weird song. What? It kind of went like, The Mantis Man of Warwick. What you gonna say? The Mantis Man of Warwick. Tell us another lie today. Or it was something like that. I don't really remember. There was also something in there about them saying I had a small willy. That's horrible. You know, but my tallywhack is just fine. My tallywhacker is actually average. That's what my girlfriend used to say before she left. Heartbreaking. Back to my original point. I had to quit me job. That's terrible, Mr. Frogger. I'm sorry about that. Well, I just want to thank you for telling your story. And uh, I hope you have a nice life. Actually, I also was here to promote me GoFundMe, since I had to quit me job. The money situation's pretty tight. This whole thing is ruined me life, and I was hoping your viewers could help me out a bit. Um, this... This is not a charity, Mr. Frogger. Furthermore, you, you didn't approve any of this with me before we started recording this interview um, and besides I only have eight subscribers eight people aren't really gonna help you out that much financially you know every little bit could help sir so you know when it comes to even if it's just a pence or a shilling or a euro please sir can I have some more all right all right look I feel bad because this whole thing ruined your life look all right, you can go ahead and promote it. Just give out the, the, the URL. I'm sorry I was a little rude to you. It just kind of caught me off guard. And I don't want my subscribers to think that uh, I'm trying to take advantage of them. You know. Oh, I, I do apologize to you and your subscribers, sir. And thank you. Uh, the GoFundMe link, you can go to GoFundMe.com slash... Oops, uh, looks like we lost the connection to Mr. Frogger. Damn, international calling. Too bad there's no way to call him back at all. Anyways, moving on. There's no need for Mr. Frogger to be lying, because as we discovered, his, his life is ruined and he's broke. And um, when he did have a face-to-face -face interview with the Daily Star reporter, he swore up and down that he was neither drunk nor high at the time of his encounter with the Mantis being. He also seems very genuine as well. There's really no reason to make this up. Like I said, it ruined his life. I kind of feel bad for him. But if what we've learned is true, he's also extremely lucky to have walked away with his physical well-being intact. If I were Mr. Frogger, I'd be watching my back though. You never know 
when uh, Zorak is going to show up to get your DNA. So, constant vigilance, Mr. Frogger. Constant vigilance. Well, that's it for today's interview. I want to thank Mr. Frogger for coming on and explaining his harrowing story so uh thanks for tuning in god bless and hell santa the only interviews that matter is a production of the children's television workshop promotional consideration provided by viewers like you thank you boop, boop, boop. the mantis man of warwick what you gonna say the mantis man of warwick Tell us another lie today, the mantis man of war.